Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Lenore Von Stein, and this is a, uh, an episode of The Facts. Uh, and this episode is called Carolyn is a Scapegoat. It's about being scapegoated. Uh, and so I'll explain more about this later. I'm here tonight with uh, Andrew Volotowski, Beth Griffith, and Bern Nix. Uh, 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 we're going to make up some music. Yeah. <laughs> How is it? 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 How how is it? How is it? character in this story, her name is Carolyn, and she's she's a relatively short person, but she doesn't look short. She 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 looks big, and um, she's um, she's a, she's very nice to look at. She's got really lovely balanced features. She's got uh, uh, her her coloring is very unusual and bold and pretty. It's got green eyes and sort of a, a light brown skin, and and um, she's she's got she's got. She's an independent thinking kind of ethical person. She, she's a lady because you had to be a lady, you know, to survive. And uh, she's negotiated uh, uh, racism and sexism and, and uh, her father, who's a scary guy, and her brother, who's a bully, and, and um, uh, her, her, her mother, who's frightened, and her, her sister, who's uh, detached, and, uh, and Catholicism, and, 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 and weaved around danger, and, and, and a limited education. Most of these um, these adversities on Carolyn um, was it, it cost a lot to his her development, uh, to her intellectual and emotional development, because th they were enormous. Because they were so it was so time consuming. You know, each episode and each each recovery from each episode, and the way that she handled most of these episodes was repetitive. Because you know, you, she was kind of a desperate situation. So whatever, it was not a time to express yourself.
some more of the story. So, okay, so Carolyn is, uh, among other things, is encircled by racism. It, it shades everybody's thoughts. Uh, her parents are ambitious for middle-class life. Um, they have a car, they have pets, they have plenty of food. Um, she grew up and the house was crowded, but it was their house. She was uh, raped one day. She was dragged into a construction ditch. Um, she also had uh, the pain and disability from rheumatism. Uh, when, when she was 18, she got involved with her, her stunning brother-in-law who had become addicted to heroin. Mm. 
To a stranger, to a stranger. A stranger, a stranger how, how the hell, hell are, are you? They sent us their financial stuff. Given it, yes. yes. Nine months pregnant, uh, pregnant with her brother-in-law's uh, child, she weighed 90 pounds, and she was rescued by her sister and a friend from her brother-in-law's empty apartment. Uh, she took a civil service job, she raised her daughter, and she married a more stable guy.
So Carolyn, by her late 20s, uh, she's drinking every day now. And um, her husband, the stabler guy that she married, uh, he's, he's conservative and sensitive like her father. And for a time, she wears a lot of makeup and um, uh, she and these very stiff hairdos hiding her, her natural beauty. So, Carolyn really enjoyed thinking when she was high. Uh, it was uh, her most productive times is when she was alone, uh, talking to herself, and and with that, you know, that that substance abusive focus. You know, that that people used to say sometimes they thought you feel more on drugs. I think you feel less on drugs, and that's what allows you to focus really well. That's what, that's what makes it, it cuts out so many of the contradictions that cloud, uh, that cloud, that cloud, that cloud. Can't see the forest for the trees. And now I don't need to see the forest. It's a later for the forest. I'm not a bad mother. For the top knot, I 
used my head. That's what I'll say for now. And then at the end I found the postscript. See me Fredo. So glad you always said and I echo me too. Me too. So her marriage finally uh, broke up, and uh, she went. She decided to go back to school. And while she was in school, she had to work a lot, you know, study all the time. So it changed from alcohol to cocaine, and it was available to her there in law school. And you know, drugs of choice are you know what's available. And she became a lawyer, and uh, she moved to the country, and uh, she took up skeet shooting and photography. E yeah, sure. <laughs> Carolyn uh, chronicled the relationships between the wealthy and, and racism and fundamentalism and prisons and schools and, and the anti-abortion movement, and, and she defended two whistleblowers and a reporter, and, and so she escaped to Latin America, and she lived with a philosopher, and she died on their farm from alcohol poisoning. Uh, she came back as a rabbit, and then as a horse, uh, as Zeus, and then as herself. Uh, there's a, a portrait of her in the Prado. And so let's take this out right now, just like Carolyn. <laughs> 